Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor, and you're listening to episode 115 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you're enjoying your summer. Speaking of summer, in this episode, I'm going to talk about vacations. And I'm sure that some of you are currently on vacation right now, or you are gonna take a vacation in the next couple weeks, or maybe you already came back from a vacation this month, because at the time that this episode is released, it will be the middle of August, if I'm not mistaken. And I know from talking to many students throughout the years that a lot of people take vacations in August. And I know that there are some countries where the majority of people take their biggest vacation in August. And so this month is not a very productive month. Uh, there isn't a lot of working going on compared to other months. So I think this will be a relevant topic for today. So we'll talk a little bit about um, paid time off. This refers to the days that you get paid by your employer that you don't actually work. So we call this paid time off or just PTO. So we'll talk about PTO around the world and uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, school vacations and some things that I did uh, when I had vacation time as a student in the past. So we'll talk about all of that today. And before we start, remember that if you need help understanding native speakers, if it's difficult for you to understand fast English because native speakers speak uh, really unclearly and they reduce a lot of their speech, then I encourage you to become a Listening Time member so that you can gain access to my listening practice seminars where I help you understand these different sound patterns and reductions that are difficult uh, to understand when you're listening to native speakers. So if you're interested in that, make sure to click on the link in the episode description. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker and you want to read fiction in English, then make sure to check out my ebook. The links to that are also in the episode description as well. And of course, you have the transcript down there, so click on that if you need it. And please share this podcast with anyone else you know who might find it useful. Uh, help them out and help this podcast grow. And lastly, please give this podcast a five-star rating if you like it, and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about vacations. So first, I want to talk about paid time off around the world in different places. And um, what I'm talking about here doesn't include public holidays because there are some holidays that the governments around the world declare uh, are holidays and people don't work on those days and they can get paid on those days usually. So I'm not referring to public holidays here, but keep that in mind because there isn't only paid time off in different countries. Uh, you also have to uh, factor in the public holidays in order to uh, come up with the total number of days that uh, people have off in different countries. Uh, by the way, when we use the phrasal verb factor in, we're saying that you have to consider some other thing in your 
equation or whatever you're doing. So you need to factor in the public holidays if you want to get an accurate picture of uh, how many days people have off throughout the year. So, for example, I lived in Mexico for many years, and I think just recently, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Mexican government uh, increased the number of paid vacation days that full-time employees need to have. So I think that now it is 12 per year, but if I'm not mistaken, it was less than that before. I want to say six, but I'm not entirely sure about that, so don't quote me on that, but um, it was uh, fewer days before. By the way, when we say the phrase, don't quote me on that. What we're saying is uh, I'm not sure if what I'm saying is true. Uh, so just uh, don't use this. Don't uh, think of this as a fact, right? So I think that before uh, there were fewer days of PTO in Mexico, and now there are 12, um, but I'm not entirely sure. And in Europe, Many countries, probably most of them, have uh, somewhere in the 20s, so somewhere between 20 and 30 days of paid vacation. Uh, and so that's definitely the continent that has uh, a lot of paid time off uh, compared to other places around the world. So uh, Europe is definitely a place where workers have a lot of vacation time. And some other countries uh, from different continents also have a lot of paid vacation time. Uh, I saw places like Panama, for example, that are near the top of the list. So there are some other uh, countries from other continents that also have uh, somewhere in the 20s. Um, and then a lot of countries have like exactly 20 days or exactly 10 days. I saw a lot of countries uh, that have uh, that amount. And of course, some countries have in between there, maybe 11 or 12 or something like that. And then there are uh, quite a few countries that have less than that, uh, fewer than 10 days. And uh, I think the one that you're all waiting for is the United States. Where is the U.S. on this list? Well, in terms of federally mandated uh, PTO, when I say federally mandated, I'm saying um, that the federal government makes companies do this. Um, in terms of federally mandated paid time off, the U.S. has zero days. Before we continue with the episode, let me tell you about our sponsor, Sleep Number. Sleep Number smart beds give you an individualized sleep experience, which makes getting high quality sleep effortless every night. Sleep Number smart beds have adjustable firmness on each side, so couples can choose their own ideal firmness, how much comfort and support is on each side of the bed, so it's perfect for both of you. Sleep Number smart beds also help keep you asleep because they automatically respond to your movements throughout the night, and so they adjust to every move so you're both comfortable. These beds also show you the quality of the sleep that you're getting. They learn how you sleep, and they provide you personalized insights to help you learn to sleep even better. Science shows that quality sleep helps improve your mental, emotional, physical, and relationship health. So if you're waking up tired, here are some tips to help you sleep your best. If you have some tough workouts, then the Sleep Number Smart Bed can help you get the quality sleep you need to recover from those workouts and perform at your best because these beds contour to your neck, shoulders, back, and hips, and so they provide you the support that you need, and there's even weight distribution for more comfortable sleep. And if you're feeling hot this summer, sleep experts recommend keeping your bedroom temperature at 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit for comfortable sleep. 
You can use your air conditioner or fan with your temperature balancing sleep number smart bed and bedding to help both of you keep cool and sleep just right. And do you and your partner disagree on comfort? That's pretty normal because 8 out of 10 couples prefer a different mattress firmness than their partner. But don't worry because Sleep Number Smart Beds let you choose your ideal firmness on each side of the bed and they automatically respond to your individual movements throughout the night to keep you both sleeping comfortably. My sleep number is 35 and my wife's is 40. But that's not a problem because each side of the sleep number smart bed can be personalized for our own individual preferences. And let me mention one other benefit of getting quality sleep, which is mental well-being. As a language learner, getting quality sleep is essential for my mental focus, so I need to get a good night's sleep. I'm sure you agree with me that sleeping well allows you to focus better when you're doing your language learning, and a sleep number smart bed can help you get that quality sleep. Sleep next level and unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you. And now, don't miss Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year, where all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus special financing for a limited time. Only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com. See store for details. So, the U.S. does not have any vacation days that companies are forced to give their employees. That doesn't mean that employees don't have PTO. This just means that companies don't have to give their employees any paid vacation days. However, most companies actually do this. Most companies give their employees uh, paid time off. And so even though we don't have a law about this, it's still something that occurs naturally because obviously employees want vacation days and employers want to uh, keep their employees happy or attract new employees or better employees and they need to compete with other companies to get employees. So, of course, most companies give paid vacation days, even though they don't have to. And from what I read, the average American worker has about 10 days of paid vacation per year. Some people have more, some people have less, but on average, they have maybe two work weeks, uh, maybe two uh, five-day work weeks off. Per year. Um, but that's not something that employees are forced to give. Um, this is something that employees um, negotiate with their employers and they figure this out privately on their own. So um, that's uh, how it works in the US. And if you're independent, if you don't have an employer, you, of course, have zero paid vacation days. So, for example, I'm independent. I don't have an employer. So that means I have zero days of paid time off. And I can't negotiate with anyone for that because uh, I'm my own employer, of course. And um, that's also the case because nobody can cover you right? If I had um, another partner, let's say, um, then maybe they could cover my work when I leave, but I'm completely independent. I don't have anyone working with me or for me, so obviously I don't have that. So then what do I do? Well, nowadays I don't travel for pleasure that much. Uh, I often have to travel for other reasons, but not necessarily because I planned a trip for me and my family and we're going to go have fun. We do that sometimes, but not as much as many other people, probably. So I don't travel as much for pleasure nowadays, and when I do, I usually work extra before I travel. So 
I work harder and get more work done in the weeks before I take my trip. And then I can just not do anything when I'm traveling. So sometimes I do that. And sometimes I work while I'm traveling. That's very common for me. So I usually do one of those two things. I usually either work extra before or I work while I'm traveling. But don't feel bad for me. I chose this, right? I chose this uh, type of career, this type of lifestyle. So uh, I'm not complaining <laughs> to anyone about this. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of having a lot of paid vacation. So of course, um, the pros, the advantages, um, have to do with the workers. So workers are happy if they have a lot of vacation time. So people can take many vacations uh, throughout the year. They can travel to different places or they can just relax at home and kind of um, just rest after having worked for uh, many weeks. And of course, people can uh, maybe spread out their vacation time throughout the year. So they might take some uh, of their vacation time at the beginning of the year, some in the middle, some at the end, and they can give themselves little breaks throughout the year. I know a lot of people who do that. And uh, this is good for the tourist industry in different countries, I assume, because uh, there are always tourists uh, coming to uh, visit these different locations um, because people have more vacation time. And uh, overall, uh, a lot of people, probably most people, like the fact that in um, their job, there is a lot of vacation time, a lot of PTO. However, there are some cons as well. And most of these disadvantages um, are related to the employer. Okay. So for example, it is hard for employers to pay for so much vacation time. As you can imagine, it becomes very expensive uh, when you have a lot of employees and you have to pay for each employee to have um, a lot of days off and they don't produce or work during those days. And so you don't make money during those days. So that's very expensive for employers. And so it creates uh, some barriers of entry for new entrepreneurs. Uh, when I say the word barrier and when I use the phrase barrier of entry, I'm saying that there's an obstacle or something that is prohibiting someone from doing something or going somewhere. So uh, in this case, there are some obstacles that prevent new entrepreneurs from starting or from uh, hiring people. So if they hire people, if they want to take on employees, they have to factor in this cost. By the way, we can use the phrasal verb take on when talking about hiring employees. So if they want to take on employees, they'll have to factor in this cost. And it seems like a very big cost for a lot of people. So some people might choose not to hire employees or not to hire more employees because it's too expensive. And so uh, this can be a big negative, of course. This can hurt the economy because businesses have trouble starting or growing. 
and that results in fewer jobs and higher unemployment sometimes. So, of course, there are some pros and cons uh, to having a lot of vacation days. And how about school vacation? So, when I was growing up in California, uh, I think that most schools uh, had two and a half months of vacation in summer. So, that was what I had for uh, most of my school career until I was in 10th grade. And then something happened, something changed. Uh, the schedule changed so that we switched to a year round schedule. That's what it's called. So, with this new year round schedule, suddenly instead of having two and a half months or almost three months of summer vacation, we only had a month and a half of summer vacation. So it was a big change, and most of us were not happy about this, but there were some uh, other good things about this schedule, and that's because it added more vacation time uh, throughout the year. So before we switched to that schedule, I think that our winter break was two weeks, and then it changed to three weeks when we changed to this schedule. And then spring break was just one week, and then that changed to two weeks. And then we got an extra break during the fall, which we hadn't had before. So that was a good thing, and overall, it ended up being good for most people because instead of just having one long vacation in the summer, uh, we had a lot of uh, medium length vacations throughout the year. So it kind of distributed the vacation time more evenly throughout the year. And so that ended up being a good thing, for me at least. Uh, I'm sure some people preferred to have a really long summer break, but for me it seemed okay. And so throughout uh, the school year we had these different uh, breaks, these different uh, vacations, and we always looked forward to the next one. The phrase look forward to means that you anticipate something in the future with excitement. You want it to happen. You're waiting for it to come. So we always looked forward to the next vacation. That was always uh, something exciting for us. And lastly, what did I do when I used to have vacation time uh, as a student? because I've never really had vacation time as an adult because I've worked independently basically my whole career. And so when I used to have vacation time, uh, when I didn't need to work uh, and uh, my parents uh, took care of me and I had uh, those breaks throughout the year, we did many fun things. I have great memories of my vacation time as a kid and as a teenager. So we took a lot of family vacations. I would say that every year we usually took one pretty big family vacation. Um, it wasn't always uh, a huge vacation. We didn't uh, go to other countries usually um, besides uh, Mexico a couple times, but we went to different states, different cities, different nature places, and so we took a lot of family vacations that I have great memories of, and I'm very thankful that we did that as a family when I was a kid. I remember going to Hawaii a few times with my family, and I will never forget those vacations. Uh, they're still very clear in my mind. 
I remember a lot of the places that we went to, the things that we did. I really enjoyed that. And we took quite a few road trips as well. I remember taking road trips、uh, throughout the southwest of the US. For example, driving、uh, from California all the way up to Idaho, actually, which is not in the southwest, but we drove through、uh, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, those places. And I have great memories of that time. So we took road trips.、Uh, we also went to、uh, Mexico, as I mentioned,、uh, but just to the northern part that's close to the border with San Diego. But I remember driving down there、uh, a couple times with my family、uh, and spending some time in Mexico. And we also went camping every summer. I really loved this. It was one of、uh, the best traditions that my family had. And I really want to start this tradition with my family now because、uh, I love camping and I love the tradition of、uh, camping as a family and. Uh, kind of spending that time outdoors,、uh, sleeping in a tent.、Uh, I know that's not the most comfortable thing, but、uh, it's a fun experience. You know, being around the fire、um, and kind of helping your children、uh, love that environment and appreciate that type of trip. I really want to give that to、uh, my son and my future kids. So I loved camping. I loved playing outside throughout the summer、uh, during that vacation, going fishing,、um, spending time out in nature,、uh, running around with my friends, things like that. And so, as you can see, I really appreciated. Uh, my vacation time as a kid, and、uh, I hope my kids、uh, do as well. I hope that they have some great memories that they can cherish forever、um, about their vacation time. By the way, the word cherish just means that you really love or appreciate something, something is important to you. So, I hope that they can cherish、uh, their memories of their vacation time that they had、uh, during their childhood. All right, why don't we stop there for today? I hope you enjoyed this episode.、Uh, remember that if you want help understanding native speakers, then make sure to join my membership so you can get my specialized training to help you do that. And if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, check out my ebook if you want to read fiction in English. And remember to share this podcast with anyone else you know who's learning English. And please give it a five star rating and write a review. All right, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you in the next episode of Listening Time. 